everyone. This morning we're going to think about painting skies and we're going to look first of all at one of the most famous English watercolour artists and that's Joseph Mallard William Turner. Gorgeous name isn't it? Joseph Mallard William Turner. Um, and he, out of everybody in, uh, in the terms of English painting, is the most famous watercolour artist. He was born in London um, to the son of a barber in Covent Garden. He was very, very good at an early age, like most good painters, I think. And he started to produce some work that his father sold in the shop. And his father recognised his talent at a very early age. And he got him to copy some of the famous watercolour artists of the time and sell that work in his shop. And so he learned very quickly how to produce all sorts of different techniques. He produced over his lifetime something like 20,000 drawings and paintings, which is quite amazing, isn't it? Um, his work is famous for the beautiful atmosphere that he creates with watercolour and you can see that in some of the paintings here. Watercolour lends itself to um, painting atmosphere and we're going to have a go at that later on but if we look at some of his most famous paintings you can see that the skies are absolutely gorgeous. The horizon is very low down. We look at this one here and we'll talk about horizon in a minute. And so his skies dominate the work. This is my favourite painting of his and it's called The Fighting Temeraire Took to Her Last Birth to be Broken Up. That's in 1838. And this actually was one of Turner's most famous paintings and his favourite painting and if you ever get a chance when this uh, terrible lockdown is over and you get to London when you're older children you must get your parents to take you to the National Gallery and see this painting because it's very very impressive. Okay so I'm going to show you a few of my paintings that have skies so, if we look at that, I'm not a watercolour artist. It's not something that I uh, ever do a lot of. Um, I like to draw in pastel, and this is a pastel drawing. But I thought you might like to see the sky that I've done here, which is very atmospheric, isn't it? Very foreboding, and it's Jon Snow from The Game of Thrones and it's called Winter is Coming. And just by the colours in the sky, you get that feeling of uh, something is going to happen and it's a bit ominous and dark. These are just prints of mine. My grandsons have the originals. This is obviously uh, Thomas Shelby from uh, Peaky Blinders. But there I've just chosen a very simple plain sky against the horizon here. Um, so that's just done with pastel and built up on top of that. That's a watercolour painting of my cottage here and I wanted you to look at the sky there. That's done by a friend of mine called Monica Cook who is a really fantastic watercolour artist and you can see how she's mastered the technique of doing clouds and we're going to have a go at that later on. This is a beautiful watercolour painting and I can't quite 
recognize the name here but i bought it years ago at a demonstration somebody was showing you how to do a watercolor and i just thought that was fantastic and we are going to have a go at this where you wet the paper and you put the watercolor on and you get these beautiful effects here but i want you to notice and think about and i'm going to talk about it in a minute about the horizon line and this is the horizon line here very low down if we're going to do a big nice sky so this is the horizon line children and above the horizon we can put mountains if we want and this has a lake in front um, and this is the Langdale Pikes actually in the Lake District but the sky is, is quite amazing isn't it and the last one I'll show you And this is called Contemplation. Um, and again, I just love this painting. Look at the atmosphere created in the sky quite simply by wetting the paper and running your colour on. And on watercolour paper, the paint will run to where the water is. So he would put a distinct line of water here and above here and the paint will not run beyond there and so he can then put all these gorgeous colours on which just on good watercolour paper will just spread out. We'll try it on cartridge paper and on computer paper we might just have to try a different technique to do a sky but I thought you would like to see that because um, it, it, it is a one of the best examples that I've seen of a watercolour. I have kept meaning to have it framed but I haven't got round to it in all these years so I've had it a long time. Here we'll have a look at how to put our horizon in and if we look taking that as our paper, we can put a horizon line here and it's actually what we would say, it's where the sky meets the land or the sky meets the sea. It's where we're looking out and the sky appears to meet the land and we call that the horizon. We can put things lying on the horizon, like hills and mountains. Um, and we can think about even, I don't want to go into perspective because that's a whole nother lesson, but, and I'm working a bit upside down here, but um, if, for example, from the mountains we wanted to think about doing a river or a stream then the lines of perspective go to the vanishing point on the horizon so that we have in our mind and then into that so we wouldn't draw those lines if we were trying to do a stream or a river coming towards us we would simply meander it until it got to here so this would be the passage it would take where it would be very very narrow up here and very wide as it gets towards us so that's just simply a bit about perspective and perspective all things vertical are vertical so we'd never have a tree that was going peculiar but we could do a scene if we wanted so we'd have something like that but we think about that when we're looking to do a picture today we're going to try and think of and I'll put it up again so you can 
maybe stop the video and have a look at it. But we're taking a very low horizon line because we're wanting actually to paint the sky. Things that you're going to need, I'll put this picture back up so you can keep looking at it because it's that's what we're, we're going to try and have a go at. Things you're going to need. Obviously you're going to need your paper. Um, if you've only got computer paper, we'll have to do that. If you've got cartridge paper from a sketch pad, that will sort of work. But if you've got um, watercolour paper from a watercolour pad, that is lovely to work with. You need a mixing palette. You need your two water jars, again. One to wash your brush and one for clean water. You need a paintbrush. You need your watercolour paints. Um, tissues are very important this time because we're going to learn how to do clouds. So we're going to need tissues or kitchen roll. If you haven't any of those, toilet roll. As long as you've got something to mop up paint. Um, I will try and put some finger paints out for the little ones in a minute if you have them to show them how they can just streak some colours on to make the sky. Okay, let's see what you can do. So, if we look in books, we can probably find some very interesting skies where we can do a sky and some of the ground and then build up a scene with trees or fields here and so on. They're super sunset kind of sky by the sea and cliffs. There's quite a dramatic sky, isn't it? Beautiful with uh, the moon here and all the colours running in and then the reflections in the water. So we can start to build up ideas of what our landscape is going to look at, but we're going to learn how to paint a sky so that that's our starting point today. I'm going to use a different set of paints. These paints that I normally use when I'm working with you, uh, Windsor and Newton, my children bought me those, a nice new wooden box. But these paints They're very old. My uncle bought me those when I was 15. So that was about hmm, 47 years ago, as far as I can work out, yes. But I have used those. And strangely enough, a tin of watercolour paints is much more valuable than a wooden box, strangely enough, although it, it doesn't look as if it would be. So I'm going to try and put the paints there so you can still see them. It's always a bit difficult. Um, I'll move that. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the brushes as well that can be used. So they're my brushes. Different kinds of brushes for different things. Some of these are for oil paints, which I quite like to work in oil paints. Um, and these bigger ones, like these, they're for watercolour. They're to wet your paper and put the paint on quickly. So because I'm working on a bit bigger piece of paper so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use one of the bigger brushes, that one, and this one to do the lines so you can see. Right, the first thing we've got to do is to wet our paper because the technique that we're using is called wet on wet. But what we have to do, we have to 
put a horizon line in and I've put it in nice and dark for you. So the sky is going to be here and that's our horizon line where the land or the sea appears to meet the sky. We're going to have to first of all put water exactly to the horizon line because the water will only run to where I've painted it. So I'm going to try and paint very quickly. The secret with watercolour is speed because if you let your paper dry, you've had it. Well, with this particular technique. So you, when you're trying to do this, so try and get it you know, right up to that line. I would normally use that big brush to put the rest of the water in, but I'm going to show you how you can do it with a tissue because most of you won't have a big brush. So wet. It is you and streak it down so you get it all your paper wet. Make sure your paper's wet. Okay, we'll turn it round and then we'll think about our colours. I'm going to try and do um, a sunset -y kind of um, picture first of all. So I'll get this brush and I'll wet it. And I'll try and pick up might pick up a few colours. I'll just have to ignore the phone. <laughs> so we'll do a, a nice yellow along there. Oop, I'll keep doing this, don't I? I put my brush in the wrong thing. Go a bit deeper. And try and keep your line so they're not all together straight. So you've got to work quickly. You need to keep your line your marks and your, your things straight. Not to go to the edges a bit. So, so we put our colours on and then we can take our paper and then if we tip it, the colours will start to run, if you can see that. I know it's a bit difficult sometimes to see on these. But if I keep turning it, things will start to happen to the colour. They'll start to sort of merge into each other and they'll start to move. So you can see that here where they start to blend downwards and they start to run but they run to where the edge of the water is and if I'd made a perfect line there then it wouldn't run beyond that but you can see from that how the nice effect that you can get with doing this uh, which is called wet on wet so you wet your paper and you run your wet watercolour on and you can see how that yellow when I turn it upside down is starting to run. Now, ideally we would let that dry but obviously I can't it would take uh, too long but you would let that dry because when I put the next lot of water on, what will happen is that uh, it might, what we call, bleed into the, that colour. So you should let that dry and then do the next bit of sky if you can. Very quickly, or oh, I should do it with the tissue like you would do. Okay. as quick as I can. I'll have 
to go along the edge with the brush. And then I might think about doing um, some sea. So the sky and the sea should sort of reflect some of the colours. So when we do it, the sea is sort of um, straightish lines, isn't it? So I'll start to streak. I'm not going to do it all blue, but I'll start to streak a bit of the blue on. Um, and maybe a bit of the reflection of the colours that are in the sky. And maybe a little bit more blue. Oh, that's a nice dark colour. It would be darker at night time, I think. So that again, you can see how the colours are running into each other, aren't they? And I can put a few lines like that to make sure it looks a bit see. So you can see how very quickly you can build up a landscape um, with a beautiful sky and sea. And you can see this all starting to run already. I tipped it. Can you see that? It's all starting to run into each other here and gives that lovely effect. All right, so you could do some detail on that. You could do a boat at sea or something like that. The next one I'm going to show you is how to do some clouds because people always get a bit, find it a bit difficult with clouds. So there's my horizon line. Um, I don't know where I put my pencil. Hmm. Oh, anyway, I'll just have to paint them on, I think. Oh, let's see if there's one in here. Yeah. It's blue, that'll do. Just to show you, I'm going to put a few sloping hills on put a few hills on there and I've maybe put a bit of a river here uh, and we'd have fields and things there okay so we're going to have to this time take the edge of the water to the edge of the hills so with that brush I'm going to come along the hills here. Dripping everything everywhere. And then we'll take a tissue. We're going to do a blue sky. So I'll just wash my brush. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to pick up different shades of blue. So at the top of the sky, I'm going to get this darker blue, I think, because we're trying to get some kind of atmosphere into it. Different 
shade just streaking in. you can see them. Oh dear, busy this morning. We just ignore it. Okay, so Let's turn it so that it starts to do things. So can you see how it's starting to do all that lovely kind of speckly thing and the colour is starting to run. So if I hold it in different ways, it'll run in different directions. So I'll just hold it for a minute because I have to take the, put the clouds in before that dries. But you can start to see, hopefully, that it, it's starting to run down in different directions here. And then I take a tissue. Okay. And then I start to put in some of my clouds. straight away it's starting to look a little bit more like sky isn't it but you've got to do that quickly before it dries so you get this kind of lovely effect of a kind of looks a bit of a dull day doesn't it as if it might rain fairly soon again we'd have to let that dry but we haven't got time so we'll paint the hills very quickly I'm always saying very quickly but I'm very conscious of the time so I'm going up to the horizon line You'll notice that the hills are above the horizon line, aren't they? They're above the horizon line. And let's see what kind of colours. I'm going to mix a bit of blue and maybe a bit of purple because the top of them might be have a bit of kind of heather on them, might they? And again, you can see how that gorgeous effect starts to come in where it's, it's running. I think the paints are quite old now because the speckly bits are the old um, paints. So I'm gonna put a bit of green on as well, just to show that they're hills. But again, you can start to see um, how, I'm even going to put a bit of blue on there just to reflect the colour of the skies in the landscape. You can see how the colours start to blend. They are blending a bit up into the sky, which they wouldn't if you'd let each layer dry. We'll quickly do the river. Dip 
taken in the wrong water again, I'd say, but never mind. sort of flow a bit. It's a bit brown in there, I think. Then you might just want to fill the rest up with different shades of green. So again, it will all blend into each other a bit. You can see there where I've wet that. But if you let each layer dry, then you'll find it works. So my river will run into everywhere else, I should think. But you can see there how lovely that that is. So very quickly you can build up um, a nice scene here of the countryside and then you would, when you'd finished it, I'm not going to now, um, you could put different things on. You could put a stone wall, a gate, all sorts of interesting things. You can. Do a bit more work on the water, taking a bit off with your brush here. So, there we are. How to build up a sky. We can take off the clouds and we can put different colours in the hills. I'll show you quickly one or two that I did before on your size of paper. Um, that I thought was quite nice. It's the front of a, a watercolour uh, book and it shows you the nice effects you can get with the sky and watercolour. That's on cartridge paper. Do you remember? Um, I said you could do it on cartridge paper. It does work. So you can have a go with that. And that's a nice gentle sky with the sea. And then you can build up a bit of detail in the foreground with the boats. I'm just going very quickly to show the little ones what they can do. So I'll just put that to catch all the mess. So you can just get your finger paints. Again, I've drawn a horizon line. You're going to dip your fingers in and start to put some lovely colours in. I might go yellow up to that line. Whoop into my finger but you can go mad and do a beautiful sunset so I'm just dipping my fingers in lots of different colours here Streak them out and get these lovely effects of the sunset. A 
and then we can think about doing a C down here. So again, you just dip your fingers in the paint and if you get a few different colours on your hand, I think it's rather nice. My blue paint's gone a bit peculiar. I think it's with age. thin that, that blue but never mind. We perhaps put a bit of that sky reflected. That nice greeny blue. See what that looks like. So, not a bad effect, is it? So you can have a go at that. Very messy. That's just a watercolour I found in a book when I was looking that I did, I don't know when. But it's just a gentle watercolour and then you can start to build up some detail on it. So I've got the horses here. I thought you might like to see that. Okay, just enjoy having a go at doing watercolour with the skies and see what happens. Okay? <laughs>